Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is blessed on this morning. I am so excited before I open up a prayer, super excited about the message on today. But let me tell you, number one, several of those songs tell me they need to add them to your, your library because they will definitely bless you. Um, but I am going to, um, before I open up a prayer, I want to say if you can put your email address in the chat, um, because I want to start sending out like upcoming events. I'm working on another women's conference, um, also too for 2022. Um, I'm thinking about a women's retreat somewhere in probably Lake Tahoe, something somewhere to get away and just resonate on what God has for us. So put your email in the chat so you can get the um, upcoming events. Amen. Amen. Father God, we thank you on this morning. Father God, we thank you for the word that's going to be bringing forth. Father God, I pray right now, Father God, as I decrease and in you increase in me, Father God, I'm surrendering everything to you, Father God, to use me as a vessel, Father God. I thank you for the word that's going to be coming forth today. I'm pretty sure it's going to bless each and every person on this line. Father God, I say thank you for the things that you're doing and the things that are yet soon to come in Jesus name. Amen. 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 When I tell you, tell you, I'm so excited. So number one, I just want to talk about before we get into the message um, that we all know that we all heard about spiritual warfare and we all know that we do come into attack at times. And so today's topic is going to focus on that, but that's not quite the subject because I want to give you some things that can get you prepared for the spiritual warfare. So who all knows that there are several health conditions that are silent killers, amen? And the silent killers, you know, there's about a good seven of them that can go undetected if not caught by signs or symptoms or by the technology that we have today. Um, one of the specific ones I wanna focus on is high blood pressure. High blood pressure can affect anyone from adolescent to a young adult. Um, there's no symptoms with high blood pressure. The only way you can detect it if you get your blood pressure checked. Um, blood pressure is, if it's left uncontrolled, can cause a stroke, a heart attack, um, even heart failure or kidney failure. Um, and you have to be very aware and just constantly checking and making sure you're going in for your physicals, making sure that you know your health is in good standing. But also, like I said, it's a silent killer. You won't even know that you had it if you didn't get your blood pressure checked. So that's just how a spiritual, spiritual attack happens. It comes in silently. You don't even know that you're under spiritual attack. Many Christians are blindsided by spiritual attacks. So today's title and message is be prepared for spiritual battle. Amen. We have to be prepared to go into battle. And um, John 10 and 10 says it's best. It says the thief does not come except to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. And I'm just going to pause right there because that's what he comes to do. He comes in to steal, kill, and destroy, but he does it quietly so that you don't know to where you can prepare yourself in ahead of time so he don't get full gain on you. Amen. But if you just think about the latter part of the verse, it says, I have come that I may, that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. God is here. He has come to save us. He has come to keep us. Amen. He comes to so that the enemy cannot take us out because God is here and he had gave us life. If you think about it and you know your word, you know that the battle is already won, that we are already victorious. But still on today, in today's time, living in the heavenly places like on earth right now, that we are still going to be under attack because if the enemy can throw us off, he knows that he has won. And so you have to be prepared to go into a spirit, spiritual battle because it's spiritual warfare each and every day. The devil does not rest. He does not sleep. And he's on you every single moment waiting for you to let your guards down. So it's so crucial that we have to be able to have our spiritual lenses on and able to recognize the spiritual attack. We have to be able to understand and see when it's coming. So I'm going to give you a few pointers to call some things out because if you have any of these that means that you're under spiritual attack. The first one is the loss of spiritual desire. So the enemy is a, the enemy goal is to get you away from God. He's he's trying to destroy your relationship that you have with God, or at least he's trying to make you question the relationship that you have with God. You know, am I trustworthy? Do I even deserve this? You know, I did this yesterday and I'm not lining up. I don't do this. I don't do that. That's the enemy. That's the way of the enemy to kind of throw you off track to make you question or to make you even pull back to what God has for you. 
the difference from doing something because it's routine versus doing something that glorifies God. When you start doing stuff just because it's routine, you, you're not doing it out of the desire, out of the fulfillment that you want with God. You're doing it because it's routine. When you have a relationship with God and you're trying to seek him and you're trying to grow within him, it's something about you that should light up. You should get excited. You should get excited to log on to Purpose Driven Ministry to hear what God has for you. You should get excited to join praise and worship just so it can uplift your spirits to get you back and get you ready and be fed for the beginning of the week to start you off. You should have that desire. Amen. Psalm 63 and one says, God, my God, it's you. I search for you. My whole being thirsts for you. My body desires you in a dry and tired land. No water anywhere. You should have a desire, a desire like no other. Amen. Not of this world, but of God. Somebody that can provide on you for a daily basis. Somebody can come through and just satisfy every need that you have. Your desire doesn't disappear overnight. So this is not an overnight thing. This is a silent killer. Amen. So it takes time. And if it was not silent, he don't want you to be, he don't want you to be on notice or he don't want it to be noticeable that you're under spiritual attack. He wants to be in there because he's clever, right? He's sneaky. The enemy is sneaky. So the enemy wants it to seem like there's nothing wrong that you go on with your daily life. There's nothing wrong, but little by little, he doesn't want to draw attention to himself. The enemy will gradually start causing distractions life situations to arise to where you're like, okay, this happened yesterday. Okay. But I'm not going, you know, maybe it's just, this is nothing. I'm a, you know, I put it on the back burner. However, you begin to stop reading your word, which the word helps you renew your mind. It helps you steadfast. It helps you persevere. It helps you get your thoughts in order, get your mind straight. Amen. It helps you to understand that you are not Began to feel disconnected when you pray and then eventually you just stop praying altogether because this is how the enemy works he's taking your spiritual desire away the second one is a financial attack we all been there when everything hits at one time you got unexpected bills your car breaks down um, your business plan falls through you have a job loss a sick family member a child in need something happens but it all happens in the same time and if you if you're not if you're not careful this is how the enemy will cause you to worry about the circumstance at hand he will prevent you from seeing the plans that god has for you for each and every one of these situations it will interfere in your worship it will call, cloud your judgment and it will also cloud your decision making. So it will prevent you from hearing from God. So when everything is coming all in one way, you be like, okay, you know, I can't, no, you can't pray a bill away. You have to pay a bill away. Amen. It's, you can't pray on it, but you can pray that God blesses you. You can pray that he begins to open up doors for you. You begin to hear his voice and get the decision and the direction that you need in order to get through this circumstance. Amen. It will prevent you from hearing from God. It will make you think just because you there, just because there's a present door that opens, you may have a door all of a sudden it starts to open. But mind you, your judgment is clouded. You, you can't concentrate. You can't even worship him. You don't even know what direction today. Every even though a door of opportunity presents itself, that does not mean that that door was opened by God. So you have to be careful that when you are going through something that you have to take a step back, you have to remove yourself from the situation and you have to go into a fast and a prayer or in prayer to order to hear from God because the enemy could potentially have that door open for you. Amen. So when you step in, it may seem all good. Like they said, the grass is not always greener on the other side. That's how the enemy is. His grass is definitely not green. It's artificial. You can't water it. You can't pull it up. You can't dig it up and you can't plant nothing in it because it's an artificial, it's an artificial presentation. Amen. So you have to be careful that you cannot get caught up and start to worry or become frustrated or flustered with these things that are presented before you because it's the enemy trying to throw you off course. Matthew 4 and 8 says, 4 through 8 through 11 says, then the devil brought him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. He said, I'll give you all these if you bow down and worship me. Jesus responded, go away, Satan, because it's written, you will, I will worship, you will worship the Lord, your God, and serve him only. The devil left him and the angels came and took care of him. Listen, the enemy is trying to present something to you that looks good, tastes good, smell good, and he may be even fine in a glass of water. She may even be fine in a glass of water. But let me tell you, those temptations will cause you to lose 
every single thing that's before you. Amen. You have to remember that God is the one that supplies every need. He's the one that feeds you. He's the one that keeps you. And he's the one that restored you. And just like the angels came and restored Jesus on that mountaintop, God's going to do the same thing for you. So don't be persuaded by the things that you see that are tangible, but just know that God is in the mess. Amen. The enemy will strategically strategically creep in when there's an opportunity of vulnerability. So when he sees a crack, a, just a, a door open just a little bit, the enemy will slide on in there because he's a snake. He can slither through anything. So when you have your guards down and you're not prepared mentally for the spiritual battle, the enemy got his upper hand. Third, being tired, flat out physically tired, being fatigued, being weak in the mind and in your body allows the enemy to play tricks in your mind. A perfect example would be Elijah. We just finished a study on Elijah and the journey that God had him on. And I'm going to tell you, after Elijah had that amazing experience on Mount Carmel, where God showed up and showed out, Elijah was exhausted. He had been ripping and running. He never took time to rest for himself, to feed himself. He was too excited and too unknown, too much adrenaline because God had did something magnificent with using him. Amen. But he never took the time to rest. So he was physically tired. Being physically tired will allow the enemy to come in, like I said, to just flood your mind with all type of thoughts. Um, it'll have you thinking something that ain't even happening or have you thinking something that didn't even transpire. And this is what happened to Elijah. Being physically tired, this allowed the threat of Jezebel to send him away to run and hide in a cave to just curl up and just fear everything that he had in him, not knowing that God just brought him through. God just showed up in his life. God just created a miracle for him on top of Mount Carmel, and he forgot all about it because he was physically tired that the enemy crept in and allowed that thought, that threat that Jezebel sent out to play in his mind. Amen. So first Kings, you'll see it. It says in first Kings 19, one through four, Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also, he had been executed, that he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, so let the gods do me more, more also if I do not make your life as the life of the one of them by tomorrow, by this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. He went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judea, and left his servant there. He even left the person that was helping him. He was that scared that he fled and left the person that was helping him. Let me tell you, when the enemy comes in, you don't got no friends because you don't even, you think everybody is against you, that everybody don't have your best interest or your best judgment, that you would flee and leave them knowing that that's where sometimes your help come from. Amen. But here, but him himself that day, he went to a journey in the wilderness and sat down under a tree, under a broom tree. And he prayed that he may die. And he said, it's enough. Now, Lord, take my life. I am no longer better than my father's. Listen, he was praying to die because he was that scared. When you are physically tired in your body, in your mind, and you feel like there's no out, you will send some prayers like that to for God just to take everything away that you that he'll call you on home. But that's not what you want him to do. You want him to come in and restore you and use you like he did before, because God can do that. He's a redeemer. He does not leave you or forsake you. He will restore you in order to do the things that you're called to do. Another important one um, that you all, I mean, that should have been number one, you cannot have a weak prayer life. Amen. Matthew 26 verses 40 says, then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, what you could not watch me for one hour, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Listen, when you have a weak flesh, you won't pray, you won't read your word, you won't worship, you won't even surround yourself with people that are Christ-like minded in order to be restored. Prayer is crucial. It takes discipline. It's not a, it's not a special gift that is given to you everybody has the ability to pray. What it takes from us, it takes action. It takes for us to be faithful. It takes for us to be consistent on our part in order for it to work out. If you can't read your word and you can't pray right now, so let me tell you, you are under a spiritual attack. So you might as well get ready because it's happening. If you can't do none of these things that I called out today, 
that you are under spiritual attack because sometimes when you feel like you don't want to be bothered, you want to be isolated, that's a sign of spiritual attack. If God didn't tell you to go into a place of solitude, a place where you can just fast, worship, pray, and seek his word, because in that place of solitude, you're still supposed to pray. You're still supposed to uh, read his word. You're still supposed to worship him. So if you're not having that, you're currently under spiritual attack. We have to be prepared for this spiritual battle. We have to understand that there's a requirement for this spiritual battle that needs to take place in order to go in and be ready for war. We have to understand that Ephesians 6 verses 10 through 18 tells us, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, not partial, but the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We don't wrestle against this right here. No, it's a spiritual battle. You have to understand that. It's not the person that is front of you. It's not your child. It's not your spouse. It's not your friend, your boyfriend, your girl. It's not that person. It's a spiritual battle that is taking place in the spiritual realms, in the high heavenly places. What's happening is he's using those individuals to attack you spiritually. And you have to understand that. So again, it's not against principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this ages, but against the spiritual holes of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in this evil day and having done all things but to do is just to stand. Amen. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, having showed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all, taking the shield of faith, which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation in the word of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying, always praying, what I repeat, always with supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with the perseverance and supplication for all saints. You have to be geared up, amen. You have to put on the full armor of God in order to fight this spiritual battle because you have to remember who made us. You have to remember who created us, who placed us here. God created us knowing that there will be storms that will come. God created us knowing that we are going to face challenges, difficult circumstances in our life, but he's here. That's why he's our hedge of protection. That's why he is our strong tower. Amen. Psalms 92 and 12 says the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Laban. I also like to tell you that the amplified version says it even better. It reads the uncompromisingly righteous shall flourish with the like a palm tree be long lived, stately, upright, useful, and fruitful. They shall grow in a cedar levan. That means majestic, stable, durable in a time of incorruptible during a time of a storm. We won't shift. We won't, we won't break in a time of a storm because God has us. He knew this storm was coming. He's just like our heavenly father. He prepares us. He tells you, child, the storm is coming. I need for you to prepare up. I need for you to put your armor on. I need for you to be ready. He is going to prepare you like no other, amen? So you have to be ready, amen? So I encourage you to study and research the anatomy of the palm tree because let me tell you, palm trees don't break, but they bend during a storm. The scripture says again in Ephesians 12, Ephesians 92 and 12, the righteous have flourished like a palm tree. Listen, God's word, no, the, like I said before, a palm tree doesn't break, it bends. So when the storm comes, we may bend a little, but God gonna bounce us right on back and we're gonna be stronger like never before. The storms may come, we may be under spiritual attack and we may, be, we may even bend just a little bit, but God will, my God will not allow us to break, amen. Micah says eight and seven, do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be my light. Be prepared for this spiritual battle because the thing is the enemy may think that he may knock you down. The enemy may think that you're not going to get back up, but God says that you will rise and you will rise like never before. You will be strong like that palm tree. You may bend or sway, but you won't break. So if you're in a storm right now, let me tell you right now that you're not going to break. You are just going to bend a little bit and you're going to bounce right back and be placed right back in position where God has had you. Amen. Be prepared for the spiritual battle. Don't be like a tumbleweed tossed to and fro, unrooted, 
not producing fruit, but be like a palm tree, amen, a palm tree, a soldier ready for battle. Like the song said, it's a fixed fight. We already won, amen. There's no need to be mis, uh, misled. There's no need to be a wayward child because God has prepared a battle, a place for you, amen. We are victorious and we need to walk up with our head, head held high. We do not need to give in to the enemy. It may be tough right now and it may look like there, there's no way that we can turn back, but let me tell you, he has, have, he has us covered, amen. He has us already covered with his arms of protection. He's our strong tower. He's our way maker. He's our redeemer. He's our father. He's our comforter. He is our comforter during a time of storm. Amen. He will give us that peace when we need it. He will be there. Amen. To put his arms around you when you're crying at late night in the midnight hour. God is there because the spiritual battle is already won. We just got to remember just to put on your full armor of God. Be geared up. Know that your prayer life have to be on point. Know that your spiritual lenses have to be on. You can't look at this thing with a natural lens because you'll be fooled each and every time. You need to have your spiritual lenses on so you can recognize the attack of enemy. So when something is presented before you, whether it's in this earthly realm and it's presented before you and it comes before you and you say, oh, you know what? That's a trick of the enemy. Let me take note right now. Let me write this down because now I know what I need to pray on. Amen. I know what I need to intercede on. I know what I need to fast on because the enemy, cannot be, you can't be defeated. You will never be defeated as long as you are with God and he's on your side. Amen. You are adapted into a royal priesthood. You are in a magical and a miracle working kingdom. Amen. You have a mansion on a hillside high. So when you enter in, he's going to say, good job, my good and faithful servant, because you knew the instructions that I had gave before you and you followed each and every one of them. You got to know that this Bible is not here by happenstance. It's here because it's our direction. It's something that we need to feed on, that we need to digest, that we need to intake day in and day out. We know that we need to pray day in and day out. We know that we cannot be physically tired. Let me tell you something. If you are physically tired in your body, it's time for you to rest. It's time for you to shut off things that are interfering in your life that needs to be turned off. If it's social media, it's somebody that is on a, on that calls you, amen, that calls you with the gossip or whatever it is, turn it off. You don't got to answer it each and every time. Ignore it. It's okay. God said, it's okay. Cause you don't have to get caught up in all that foolery. Amen. Because you need to be caught up in the word, because if you are depleted, you need to be restored, refilled, refueled in order to fight the spiritual battle. Because if not, I'm sorry, you're going to stay there until you get it right. Amen. And God don't want you to stay in the place too long. He wants you to move on because the thing he's going to ask you, just like he asked Elijah, why are you here? How did you get here? Because you allowed yourself to get here because you felt though that you were already defeated and you're not. Like I said, it's a fixed fight and we already won. Amen. Amen. So you have to be prepared for this spiritual battle. Amen. Amen. That concludes our message for today. Amen. I hope that you were blessed by it. And I hope that you understand that you need to be able to recognize the attack of the enemy when it's coming for you. If you're too comfortable where you are and, and everything seems good, you need to do a self-evaluation because everything ain't always good because God needs to mature you and elevate you. And so you have to go through something in order to reach that next level. Amen. Amen.